Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Charles Wallace. I'm so excited to bring you today's interview. We have a true rock star with us today, Toby Rand. I started watching and following Toby back on a show called Rockstar Supernova with Tommy Lee. On that show, Toby was one of the finalists. And after that show, I continued to follow his career as he was the lead singer for bands like Ju Cartel, Ash and Moon, and Radio XX. So today, I figured it'd be a nice time to change it up a bit. Instead of leading in with the normal Bare Essentials intro music, I thought it'd be cool. Let's lead in with a clip from Toby's amazing new track called Vapor. So sit back, enjoy this, and then please stay tuned for my interview with Toby Rand. Do you mind if I stay a while? I can't let you go. It's long in my throat. It's proof that I'm alive. Hi, Toby. How you doing? Thanks so much for doing this. I really appreciate it, and I'm super excited. Would you uh, Would you mind introducing yourself to the audience? Yeah, no worries, Charles. Thanks for having me, mate. Uh, my name is Toby Rand. I'm Australian, but I live in America, and I still kept my accent, so that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Toby, for um, I I mean, when I reached out to you, I reached out to you honestly from a fan's perspective. Uh, became aware of you on a television show, but before we'll get into some of that um mm -hmm. so you're definitely in the music industry um i like i said i'm a fan i think you know for those of you who don't know toby i'll just sum it up this way it's real good rock and roll very very good lyrics and toby has a real real gritty voice that makes people feel something so it's the best way i can describe it um i i, I hope i did it justice that. yeah I, I appreciate that man yeah like um, I've, I've been singing and I grew up in Australia, like singing in choirs when I was younger and my older brothers were rock and roll singers and my mum was a music teacher. And so I got the bug for rock and roll in Australia. And, and when, when I grew up, it, you, you played six nights a week. Like there was just a circuit that you did. Even when you were 15, 16, you could find, you know, gigs at the football club or wherever it was. So I've been doing that for so long, man. And then, um, being able to get on the TV show called Rockstar Supernova, um, 2006, when I was like 27, you know, um, that was like the biggest break that I could ever imagine to, to to get over to the States, you know, not many people get to go over from Australia. And I've kind of been here ever since, just kind of navigating my way through the industry and learning new tricks and developing my craft and meeting cool people, having the best ups and having some really weird downs. But, man, it just... I'm happy to be where I am, you know? So thanks for having me on, bro. Oh, man. I Listen, man. Thank thank you. So so I'm glad you brought that up. So it sounds like you come. I, I'm always interested in that because um, so back in the 80s, actually, I want to give a shout out here. My Uncle Tom was mm -hmm. in a rock band called um, Simon Catholic. And okay. they actually came pretty close. They almost got onto MTV with a video. And I used to go. I watched them at a couple clubs. So... Mm -hmm. So he's fantastic guitar player even to this day. Um, but me personally, I'm not I'm not musical. My sister can sing, right? But not me, yeah. right? So I'm always curious when I talk to anybody that's in the music industry. So, you know, where's it come from? And it sounds yeah. like for you, your brothers and and, and your mom. Yeah. So, you know, were you besides them like Toby, how's it start? I mean, is it just start you see them and you start to emulate it, you just start to sing? Yeah, it, it kind of is like that, man. Like I, I, I'm younger than my, my older brothers by about four years and six years. So when I was 
10, they were just getting into their teenage years where they could experiment playing in, in bands. You know, they were allowed out of the house a little bit more and have the more freedom. Um, you know, my, my dad's an electrochemist. He's a scientist, the doctor of electrochemistry from Cambridge University, right? Very proper. Mm -hmm. my, I met my mum there, and, but she studied music. So they, they, they were a very proper couple and they moved to Australia with us and, um, and had, had three sons. And my dad thought, I, you know, we'll have some academia in the family. But we all kind of gravitated to music. Because mum, mum would fill up the house whether we'd, we'd be opera or, and even my dad, he used to book like Chuck Berry back at um, back at the school dances back in the sixties, you know. So oh. he he would always t tell us about those stories, but then want us to go to university to study, you know, chemistry. Mm. But it just it didn't kind of work out that way. We we'll just gravitated to the way it was, and it's I, I don't know if it's a genetic thing or nature or nurture, but um. My brothers kind of led the forefront. They they were, you know, listening to to rock and roll pretty early. You know, listening to like um, Talking Heads and Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin and and all these kind of things. They they you know, being a British family, we kind of lean more to the British rock and roll. But then when my brother started kicking onto Van Halen and and Aerosmith and things like that, I was like, holy holy crap! I think you know, like something happened with me, you know. Um, and so they played in a really popular rock and roll band locally down at the local pub, pub called the Bowie Bo Morris Hotel, which um, bands like ACDC went through. In Excess played there back in the day, like in, in the late 70s and early 80s. So we're talking the 90s now, and and there was a circuit you could do around Melbourne where you could just play all the, all at all every night almost. So like like just playing covers and things like that, and then you'd write your originals during the day. So by the time I was 18 or 19, my, my band, my first band, we were doing six nights a week and we ended up having a lighting rig and a van and a sound guy and all this kind of stuff. And my parents were like, you're going to go to university? And I was like, I was skipping school, you know, I hate to say it, but I was. And I was finding ways to kind of, you know, rehearse rock and roll and surf and not do what they kind of wanted. But, you know, that's that's just kind of how I was built, I think, you know. <laughs> Well, I'll say, so as far as your voice, and again, I mentioned it when I introduced you, right? Like for me, like I'm a huge fan of music and, you mm -hmm. know, I think I lean a lot more towards, believe it or not, I think even in my house, my family, we lean, we probably lean more towards some of the, the British rock and roll. My yeah. mom, huge, huge Beatles fan. Like I remember, yeah, yeah. Toby, we used to have one of those floor model stereos, vinyl yeah. stereos. And I just remember like sitting there, like opening up the vinyls, like, you know, Elton John, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, the Beatles, Rubber Soul, like just going through all that. And my mom yeah. would always be like playing that stuff. And, you know, it just, I think it has an impact on us. And I think for when I hear you though, like, let me say it like this when I saw you originally saw you on Rockstar Supernova, <laughs> right? Yeah. It, you look like a surfer kind of guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll tell you right now, the moment I was like, holy hell, was when you did Knocking on Heaven's Door. Yeah. yeah. And I was just like, I, it, again, I was blown away by your by your voice. That grit, Toby, was that like, did you purposely find that? Or was it something <laughs> that just happened? How does that come about? That was trauma. I have to tell you. It is when you're a singer and you do six nights a week for seven years straight, like you build up a lot of like uh, trauma on your vocal cords and just it. And when we recorded that, those shows, like, cause I remember that I can still remember it in my, in my, my mental brain. Now I can still see that moment of, and that anxiety of going on in front of, you know, 25 million people to sing a song like that. Um, yeah. That was we, we we recorded that at like six in the morning as well. So Wow. It was also like so. So all the for, for for anyone who's a professional singer who's who's listening out there, you ideally want to sing after three p.m. if you can, you know, just so your voice you're actually awake. So we were told to you know we had to get up early and film these film these shows so they could edit it and then put it out live that night so people could vote and then do the the next show the next day. So we were just like running on a lot of fumes and then they're filming you like, you know, partying during the day and getting to know each other and challenging each other. So it was not like a normal kind of professional warm up. La, 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 la. It was just like, you got to go. This is what's happening. You know, you had Tommy Lee running around at the back who was being just crazy, who was coming and going from the Motley Crew tour. So he was just, 
running on fumes as well. The whole thing was just like a can of like what's going to happen. But, um, yeah, my voice back then, um, it's interesting because I'll touch on this later when, when we talk about a few more things, but there's a reason why it was so gritty at that time. Um, it was tired. It really was. I was tired the whole season. I, it was auditioning and being part of something like that was, was pretty stressful. Um, but it worked in my favour, I guess, because um, the, one, of the, one of the guest judges on the first week was Butch Walker, who's an mm. incredible, wow, what, a, what an incredible talent. And he basically commented and said, you know, that's that's gonna sound great recorded. And I'm um, and that's sort of, it kind of gave me that boost for the rest of the, the season to go, you know what? This is who I am right now. Because you're never the same person ever. You know, you're constantly you finding yourself and, and, and either bettering or going down a tunnel or, you know, getting over something. You're constantly evolving. And in that moment, I just had to be who I was. And my strength was to be that gritty kind of like happy-go-lucky rock and roll and just put everything on the line and have fun with it. So that's kind of where it came from. Well, it definitely worked, man. And it made an impression on me. I was I was definitely blown away by some of your performances on that show. So, Toby, if we go back, I know your family was musical. I always like to know this, too. As far as who would you say some bands, like who who do you think influences you the most from even like – lyrically your voice everything like who would you say are some of your influences as far as your musical tastes yeah it 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 doesn't go too far outside of um pretty famous people um bono was my first impactful um singer uh there was uh, there you go so i'm actually i've got this sitting in my studio right now so here's the unforgettable fire one of his one of their records i have um, it you have it, yeah. So, like, because my brother was a huge, my oldest brother was the singer, and my middle brother was the guitarist, and my oldest brother was a huge Bono fan. Um, and so I, ha- I had, you know, Rattle and Hum going through, you know, because that came out in, I think it was 80, 88. I think um, mm. um, Joshua Tree was 86, 87. 86, 87, yeah. Yeah, I've got to say, Joshua Tree is probably a 10 out of 10 record. Um, Lyrically, and and the the thing I liked about him was that um, he came across as being very worldly, but um, his lyrics were very personal to him and about you know his town and things like that, and um, and, and and global situations as well. So, and he, he just used to leave it on the floor. He, I remember just he I went to a concert um, uh, two thousand and one with the Love Heart, and and it was the tour where his father had passed away, and um, he did the show the night after because he owed it and he wanted to play tribute to his father and he could hear that he was done. Mm. But he went, he did 95 and almost two hours worth of show and it was just emotional and amazing and that's kind of that's kind of where I got a lot of that, a um, lot of that emo- emotive side of me because I, I tend to write emotive lyrics a lot of the time as well. Um, and then my angsty side when I was in a band called Duke Cartel, um, we were listening to a lot of um, Soundgarden, um, Stone Devil Pilots, um, Ze- the Zeppelin on the other side. I couldn't sing like him. I can now, mm. um, like Robert Plant. Um, but Cornell, Chris Cornell, that I have to say is, I, I don't think I've heard a voice like it. I don't, I don't think we'll hear a voice like it again. Um, uh, it, it was temperamental. You, could, you never knew if he was going to fall fall off, but it was. It just kept you on the edge of your seat the whole time. So yeah, those two would be my. Wow. And Jeff Buck, Jeff Buckley, mm. Jeff Buckley, and then I have to put in Tom York from Radiohead as well. So there you go. So you got the the falsetto boys, Tom York and Jeff Buckley. Then you got the heavy hitters like Cornell and and uh, Bono. Yeah. You know, amazingly enough, and true story, my I, when I worked out this morning, that's what we had playing in the gym today was Chris Cornell. Yeah, I know. So, a lot of what you just said, I mean, I'm a, I'm, you know, not, I don't want to insult you. I'm a little older than you. I look a lot older than you, but I'm fifty. <laughs> so, um, I've got a filter on. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but for me, growing up, I still remember kind of getting out onto my own as far as my own musical taste obviously it was joshua tree and i um it's when you say about lyrics i i say this if anybody ever asked me to me one of the most deepest lyrics i think anybody's ever written was bono in one when he said Mm -hmm. did they come here to play jesus to the lepers in your head yeah that like i'll never forget the first time i heard that it kind of blew me away man i was like whoa you know but 
Wow, you uh so and I can see in your style and even in your voice because I did want to say this. I was gonna say it later on. I mentioned your grit and your mm -hmm. falsetto is strong. It's it's strong now. I yeah. really like it. And that's what I was gonna touch on. Like uh this is a not a really well well put out situation, but I actually had surgery in 2015. Okay. And I the doctor um and it, how it all came about is I went to a singing teacher, a really famous teacher out here in um, in my team. Uh, I was very lucky to work with him. His name was Ron Anderson. He actually passed away last year, which is really sad. He was a singing teacher to the stars out here. He um, he was responsible of getting Anthony Kiedis in tune. You know Scott Wayland. He did. He mm. worked with Chris Cornell when they were all on on different paraphernalia mm. um and he would tell me these stories and and i went in there to get some singing lessons from him a long time ago and and he goes well you're tired you've been carrying this for a long time and he goes i don't want you to he's a very buxom very broad you know very uh, i don't know charismatic man and he just goes i don't want you. when you get up in the morning 6 30 7 o'clock you're driving straight over here in your pajamas don't say a word and so i had to go to him and get those lessons so the first thing i did mm. was to work with him every day um and so it finally got to a point where i because i had to go on tour so i did that tour finally got to a point where i had to go and get surgery mm. so i had to get it done in beverly hills and they went down and they found like a very big lump in my vocal cord mm. and it was one of those things where it's like it's going to change my voice forever. Like I'm not going to have, um, I mean, I'll have the grit, but I'm not going to be the same. Mm -hmm. uh, and what happened was it cleared it out and I actually gained about this much of my range. So if I if I had this much, I just gained it even more. So now I'm, I'm way more flexible and I'm way more in, in um, healthier, if you like, and I can actually now adjust myself with the grit and with the falsetto. Um, and it's become like, it's changed my life. Like I, I was always out of breath. I was always a little bit stressed, but people would love the sound of it. You know, my, my old producer goes, I love it. Come over at three in the morning and, and don't say anything. Just be really tired. Mm. And then we record it. So then that's some of the music that's coming out that I'm putting out. Um, you'll hear it um, in the next kind of six to 12 months. It's really pretty gritty and pretty, pretty edgy, um, but it wasn't healthy for me. So um, I can still put that on, but it's still, I've 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 got a little bit more of a falsetto uh, range now as well. So, yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing that, man, because I there there's always in some of your songs, I, I there's little parts of it, man. When you would just hit it, it would kind of like, you know, I I guess I'm kind of weird like that, man. I know a lot of people get like I'll listen to for little parts of a song and I'll I'll rewind a couple times, be like, did I just hear that right? I would say, I think you probably don't get enough credit, and I hope you start to get more credit as a lyricist. Because mm -hmm. I think your lyrics are deep. And what I wanted to ask you was, when you write, do you yeah. find writing from a perspective of pain or from happiness? Does it, or is it both? Or where do you seem to make, have your most success? This is, um, this, I knew we were going to touch on this. And this is like something that I, the older I get, the more I, I'm in tune with the, who I am. Because when, when you're 28 to, I, I can even stretch it to 34, you're still kind of, I, you know, when you're younger, you think that's that's old, but you're getting into that where you're you're becoming a man. Like I had a child when I was 32, so like everything just starts getting a little bit more like important. Um, so when I, the my my personality is that I'm really happy and fun on the outside consistently. Like I'm, and people come to me for that that kind of like. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a silly fun afternoon, isn't it? You know, and um, and then when I'm not, they're like, oh, what, what's wrong? And a lot of those times, that's where I have to put it out onto lyrics and, and put it into words because it's like um, it's my therapy is to put a, a lyrical dump and if it turns into a song or not, it still has to get out. Otherwise, I'll carry it and wear it and... And I knew that I was speaking to you today, this was going to come up because I haven't done a lyrical dump for um, probably a couple of weeks and I can feel a block. I can feel like everything feels good, but I can feel like this sort of like dark energy kind of like just kind of lingering. Mm -hmm. And that's because I'm not helping myself kind of get through 
just it doesn't have to be like world changing things that are bringing you down just anything can bring you down you know like um and so when i was writing a lot of the records that you're referring to like save me and stuff that was that was a lot of um transitioning from um growing up in a city where uh I chose, there was football, there was cricket. Like I did all the sports, right? But um, as soon as I started playing in the band, all the guys I was playing football and cricket with, my best mates, they, they were like, oh, okay, so now he's getting attention being a singer, is he? And they didn't like it. And um, my best friends actually turned on me and I got into an altercation Well, I got kicked out of the group, say, when I was 17. So, like, I carried on a lot of resentment for that through my years and still kind of, like, makes me feel a bit weird, you know. Like, all these guys I went to school with for, for six to twelve, six to eight years um, didn't like the fact that I was playing the after parties and chose music. They saw it was um, as a bit of a, a, a pussy move or whatever you want. Um, so that, that kind of got me into the rock and roll. So I guess I've, I've always looked at that little dark side of, of, of my life um, of just wanting to fit in or having that, that kind of moment that kind of changed me a little bit. So, um, you know, I've noticed that with a lot of my current writing these days, uh, it's a little bit more like uplifting, a little bit more like uh, all-inclusive and not so down on on the dark times as much. So, yeah, but that's interesting. That it It's very um, – what I'm trying to say is that like, it is my mental dump and then like I can show you – folders of stuff that i've written but only a few actually get through the cracks into into music you know and i'll be honest with you man that you would have surprised me it would have surprised me if you said the opposite honestly i just just from listening to the lyrics and things like that i kind of suspected that that was probably close to the answer you know um but i mean i think that's you make a great point and I think all of us need an outlet somehow, some way. Yeah. You know? And it's, it's good that you get to do it through music. And I think also for, for you by putting out your music, do you ever get told that your songs, even though they may mean something to you, somebody comes to you and says, Oh, I love that song. And it means something entirely different to them. But I think that's the beauty of music. Do you, do you ever experience that? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of, that's I was I was this I forgot who actually said it. Um, one of my favorite artists I, I read it the other day, which I completely agree with is that we we obviously write the song for our vision of what it is, but as soon as we put it out to, for people to hear, that's that's that becomes their song. It becomes their interpretation. It's it's for them, and it's I would I would assume that you know because whenever I hear um, a song that resonates with me. It, it, I, I can't feel what the singer felt because I'm not that person when I wrote it. You know, I can un I can try and understand the lyrics from his point of view, but in the end, or her point of view, in the end, it, that's what reading and, and listening is. It's about putting yourself in your own imagination with your experiences and finding out how that feels to you. And, yeah, like um, I've had many people come and say that they were moved by a particular song that um, because it reminded them of, like, their grandma or something or a brother mm -hmm. and i'm like well i didn't write it about a grandma or a brother did i, I didn't i you know it's just so um the universal um the, the universal language is music so people can understand it in whatever way they want and um yeah like i said i think it's that that that's the best thing about being a musician is being able to gift um a song where people can actually have their own imagination and make them feel a certain way about something that relates to them individually so that leads to my next question, hearing you say that. So when you do like a show like Rockstar Supernova or even some videos I see of like your concerts, when you do a cover song, do you try to put yourself into a state of mind of feeling what potentially the original artist wrote? Or do you kind of say, you know what, I want to let it be what I feel it is and let it come out that way? It's um, a let, let it be what what I feel it is to me, you know, um. Like I, I'm not sure if you know this, but I did. Um, I played Jim Morrison in a in a production in Vegas last year for eight mm. months, and I had to put on the wig and everything, um, do the whole you know leather pant and everything. it was, and and so we and in the show it was called Twenty Seven. It had Amy Winehouse, Jimi Hendrix, Kurt Cobain, 
Janis Joplin, Robert Johnson, all the, the the top six who died at twenty seven, who mm-hmm. uh, who changed music in in their own right. Um, so every time I put the wig on, I was like, I wasn't trying to be um, Jim Morrison. I was just trying to be my, the essence of what I know about him and what I know about the music and how it makes me feel. And at, the more I played, I think I did one hundred and twenty shows with as Jim Morrison. And the more that I did it, the more it was incredible because the music and the thing just became like this uh, elasticity where I was, it just, I'm, I felt like, I didn't, I felt like him, but it was my version of him. So mm-hmm. like people go, oh my God, that you did a really good impression. I was like, I really didn't copy his moves intentionally. It just kind of felt natural when I was listening to the music and listening to his lyrics. And that's a that's one thing you know like and then when you do like say a um a killer's song like mr brightside you know when you put your head into brandon flowers things the way that he does it is very theatrical and very cool i'm like they're so brilliant but the, the songs make you feel that way so when you're moving when you're doing those songs you just feel like them anyway but you're still putting your own spin on it so yeah that that's pretty awesome. I didn't realize you played Jim Morrison. Um, I obviously Val Kilmer's version, and that was one of my favorite. I yeah. thought that anybody ever did of a musician. That was pretty. That was pretty incredible. So, Toby, as far as cover songs, is there a particular that you would say is your favorite to do that you might do? It's it's always on the set list kind of thing. Well, yeah, one of my favorites um, would be "Like a Stone" by Audio Slave. You know, that was like I remember seeing that. When I was, was that 2000 or 2001 when Audio Slave came out? I was like, how the fuck did they do this? Mm-hmm. How did you put Rage Against the Machine with, with Chris Cornell? Like it blew my mind. And then they had, yeah. then you put, you put um, a Velvet Revolver together with Scott Wayland with Slash. And you're like, oh my, what is happening? You know, and that was the, that was my, I grew up in the, in the super, that was my, that was our super group era. But yeah, Like a Stone was definitely, that's definitely one that is um was is a favorite to sing, yeah, because it just hits home. It's just and it's just a, a vocal gymnastics. It's just it makes you makes you feel good, and you can sit in the pocket, close your eyes, and yeah. I, that's that's awesome. So so now I wanted to ask you from, I think people don't. I think people underestimate for a lead singer, especially during a concert, like the amount of energy that you're putting in there. What do you need to do outside of you know, what do you need to do to keep yourself physically in shape? Because I can only imagine if you're not, there's going to be a problem, especially the way you perform. It seems like it's just full of energy. Yeah, yeah. So, like, well, I've so lately I've, I'm in a band called Radio XX, which are like a corporate kind of, like, cover band, you know. Like, we've got the bass player from Lifehouse, the guitarist from who used to play in Lifehouse. He's, he was in Savage Guard and then... Um, and then we had Avril Lavigne's drummer for a minute. We've got another great drummer. And we do literally anywhere from two to three and a half hour shows straight. Mm. So, like, when, when I got to Vegas and I realised that that was the thing, but, you know, like, obviously we get, we get like, paid to do that, which is great. It's not mm-hmm. free, which is awesome. But mm-hmm. when, I, when I worked it out, I was like, okay, yeah, no, I have to keep healthy. So, like, I've always been pretty food conscious and I'm always kind of surfing or working out and running or whatever it is. Um, but it's more more the voice for me. That my physical hasn't been the, the issue with me ever. It's been my voice. And um, so I've just learned along the way about a religious warm-up, you know, every night um, that I've learned through all my singing teachers. I do like a little mesh of all that. I've had three fantastic singing teachers in my life and I've used all the things they taught me to put that into one one box so that I warm up before every show. Um little tricks called oil of oregano which is little drops that put on your voice um which i learned from some opera singers when i was um working in in new york and um and sleep sleep is the best thing ever but Mm -hmm. yeah but i'm genuinely mate i i I try and eat pretty well and try and stay fit you know I'm, i'm getting older and um i it's starting to like i'm starting to work a lot and um a lot more and a lot lot longer shows and Honestly, like I feel amazing from doing it. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I I saw some pictures from a concert you just did uh, in Vegas the other night, and it looked it looked to me obviously you looked really fit. It honestly it looked like you may have actually bulked up some from what I remembered when you were doing um, Rockstar Supernova. Yeah, when I was doing Rockstar, I mean I felt like a little boy. I wasn't doing I wasn't doing much anything. Like now now I actually have a gym membership. You know I've had that for many many years, but I'm not like one of those like you know let's get yoked kind of guys. But when we talked on the phone the other day, day you know, because I'm, sh- I'm, this is why I'm, I'm sure that you're interested, is because you've just gone through a huge transformation with yourself. Yeah. So, um, so what did you do so that I can learn about, you know, you know, help my health kicks as well? You know what I mean? So. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you this. So I, I can tell you this at least, man. I'm coming to you from your future, and <laughs> you're like what, 44, 45 now? Yeah, 44 now. Yeah. Listen, man, I'm going to be totally honest with you. You're going to be kind of shocked, and you'll, rem- you'll remember this. You'll be, I remember this this crazy guy that I did a podcast with told me this, but <laughs> you're going to start to notice in increments of every, like, two years now. Yeah, you're going to be thank like, you. Holy hell. Like, <laughs> how much, like, different it feels like every everything. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, my biggest issue was obviously my weight. I was, you know, 267 pounds at 5'5", five mm-hmm. five, so I was a mess. But – you know, for me now, it's about, and I'm glad you said it, sleeping, making sure I'm getting solid, like six to seven hours. Yeah. Um, if you're not doing this, man, I will highly recommend this to you. Also stretching some type of That's yoga. Good. It's it's really good. And uh, the other thing, the only other thing I would say to you, man, is as much as people like talk about cardio, uh, I think weight training, especially at your age, my yeah. age, is the biggest thing because of, um, are you familiar with sarcopenia? No, I'm not. Sarcopenia is basically we, we, as we age starts at age 30, we can lose anywhere up to about 10% of our actual muscle mass per, per decade. Right. So that's why you notice a lot of older people they're they, they really, you know, they, they lose it, but I would just say, you know, eating, eating healthier, you know, like I, uh, my kids used to call me the cookie monster, you know, I had to get past that too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, lifting weights, man, is a big, yeah. a big deal. Keeping your strength up and, and you look, you look like you are, man, which is really, really good, man. I just, I was, I noticed it with the pictures. I said, he looks like he's really been hitting the, hitting the gym and really putting the yeah. work you know and I, I appreciate that and, and and to me it's obviously there's a little bit of the ego base because you do want to look good and feel good when you're up there but um mentally it's just it makes you feel so much better when you when you when you're able to work out feel good afterwards um you know i was just down the beach with my dog i'm going to be going to the gym later on i live i live in long beach now so mm-hmm. like um you know I'm, I'm around a very active active community and when i go to vegas you know like everyone's doing something we have friends that are in Cirque du Soleil you know we know we like buddies who are in Thunder from down under now and it's like and they're and they're and then I'm just like listen guys you can bugger off like you you I don't want a 12 pack like that you can go but um but it's inspiring to be around you know people like the guys in my band you know like um when because now I go out there to we have a band house in Vegas and and my, my buddies Bryce and Ben we um you know we 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 i go out there and i and i cook for them you know because normally they're on the go they're always working out there but they got they're very busy in vegas so i go listen guys we're gonna cook and we're gonna like we're gonna eat normal food at home and we're gonna have vegetables and we're gonna and and one of the things that i've worked on is is, is crafting a really good soup that Mm. is um it's a band soup and it, it just clears everything out gets you up, you know, ginger, garlic, you name it, spices, just to really make you feel good. And um, it, it actually, it's, like I said, it, it affects you mentally as well. Like, cause I, I always come back to mentally because um, as, as grown men, you know, like we're not supposed to, you know, sometimes we, we forget to like, you know, look after ourselves or, or talk about our feelings or whatever it is. And I'm, and I've, I've, I've just blown that out of the water ever since that I've realized that, the, the, if you don't do it, you're actually just going to set yourself back years and years. I'm just like, fuck it. Be sensitive. Yeah. Eat well. Try and look good. I don't give a shit. You're going to be, you're going to feel great and you're going to live a happy life. So that's the way yeah. I look at it. Yeah, man. And you're, you're definitely doing the damn thing, man. I'll give you that. And <laughs> so, okay. So obviously, you know, I, 
I'll probably never be, you know, I, listen to me. I'll probably never be. I will never be on the stage singing in front of all those people. What the hell does that feel like, man? It, it's pretty epic. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. We just did a show um, at the Kansas um, City uh, Union Station uh, for this big uh, corporate uh, party. And there was like 2,000 people in. And that thing's like a, I don't know if you've ever been to Kansas City before, but it's like, it's an incredible train station with high ceilings and it was chandeliers and lit up and we did a sound check and I and I there was it was just me guitar and a microphone and the reverberation and then then you put a crowd in there and you I just I used to get like this um I talked to my girlfriend she's a singer and she gets really nervous before shows and and she goes listen if you don't if you're not getting nervous you don't care and I'm like you're right. I get nervous, but now it's like it's like it's laid with excitement because I'm just so confident with everything that's going on. Um, I'm working with, with the best musicians I could possibly work with. The equipment's insane. You know, we get to handpick the songs we want to do. Everything's just awesome. I feel good. So I don't know. If you ever come to Vegas, I'll mm. show you what it's like. I'll get you on stage, and, not, and you can get up and sing. So there. <laughs> you, you're gonna you're gonna regret saying that. Man. <laughs> no, you're, I'll, you're, I'll be fine. I'll be you're, fine. You're, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, I remember. I said that to that guy. Oh, um, listen, mate. <laughs> you, I'll be fine with it. It's up to you now. Yeah. Right, man. Yeah. You know, my my wife and I have actually because my wife just recently lost um over a hundred pounds also. Wow! Congrats, you guys. Yeah. That's awesome. So yeah. we did it together, but we've been saying we need to uh, we need to try to take a a vacation somewhere now. So yeah. you know that would be uh, <laughs> that would be Sin City. <laughs> yeah, right. That would be kind of cool. So I'm, I'm good and bad. I think for somebody like you, right? Like, so I if I if I saw you on the street, I would have recognized you, right? I would have known who you are. But okay. do you? Do you get recognized a lot when you're out or you still kind of have that freedom to be able to go out and about and nobody really like you blend in more? Yeah, I think it's a, it, uh, it's blended, blended in more now. Um, but when after the show, you know, for like I in Australia, I get I get more recognized because um, they, they really did um, put me under their their wing after the show because it was um, it kind of I remember accepting like um, like a it was like an Emmy Award for Australia because it was the most popular kind of cable show mm. um they really put they really lifted me up because i was like everything i did was relating back to being from australia and like mm -hmm. and just always put like even though australia's on the map i was just i was so proud and i still am so proud to be australian so when i'm in australia like there's obviously some people that recognize but you know it's been a lot with a few years in america like after the show it was like my buddies always say it was like being an entourage we had like uh we had like a crew who drove us around we just wherever we wanted to go like had a car waiting for us it was like i was like do i deserve this i'm like ah screw it let's just have fun with it <laughs> um um and and that's about it and now and now in vegas you know because we have like um we have like a big billboard out the front that's like uh that flashes up with us performing and so that we're getting a bit of a name out there but it's nothing that it's nothing that you know. Some of my actor mates get you know who are who are, who are truly famous. So yeah. yeah. So tr so truth be told, I uh, my family, my wife, I have actually, I have my wife and my kids. We have a family group chat, mm -hmm. and uh, yesterday, I one of your pictures from Vegas. I sent it in the group chat and I said, Hey, look at this. I said, he's moving up in the world. He went from this concert in Vegas to going to be talking to me on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, um, well, but like I said to you, mate, like any, this is like, this is, um, having a chat with someone and, and like reliving some of my memories and like, and then relating it back and hearing your stories and things like that. That's, I, I got used to that over the pandemic and now it's like, it just, it feels good to do it. So like, you know, don't ever, don't ever judge, you know, the bare essentials, you know, we're all here to, we're all here for a reason, you know? Oh yeah, man. It's been, it's been a blast to do this and people, I get to meet people like you even, you know, who I am fans of. And then I meet people like you and I'm like, Jesus God, like not only a fan now, like you couldn't have been a nicer guy. So it's, again, I can't thank you enough for that. So obviously I want to get into a little bit what's going on currently because you got some big news and i you know i want to talk about that a little bit so yeah we talked about your past what's what's going on for toby rand and and right now today and for the future i have 
I don't know how many fingers I've got, but they're in. They're, everyone's in a different bowl or a different pie right now. Um, mm. So, like, I've been sitting on some solo music for for a while um, that I wrote with an incredible producer called Alex Garengas, and he's um, he's just an insane produ- producer. He's he he's worked um, on a million animation projects as well, and, and I've I've been lucky enough to sing. Um, um, be voices on on a couple of things that he's produced, like Penguins of Madagascar. I did a Christmas song with the penguins, and <laughs> um, did some bits on Kung Fu Panda, and um, so he's he's just an incredible guy. So I'm just starting to drip out some of that music right now, which I've been sitting on for a little while. Um, so on November the fourth, um, which will be last week when this airs, um, it, the songs come out. So worldwide, a song called Vapor. Um, and in that song, there's a lyric that says, "Will you be mine?" And it's um, it's, it pays homage to the fact that um, sometimes you can you can sk- skate through life and you can feel invisible, but until you find something that that you relate to and and that you connected to, you kind of ask it, you know, will, will you be mine? Like whether it be a pet, whether it be your family, whether it be friends, whether it be a girlfriend, husband, wife. Um, so that's that's it. I just th- decided to kind of put out some ballads right now because I've um. I put out some rock and roll with my other band uh, last year and the year before, a band called Ash and Moon. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but um, I wrote this record with the bass player from In Excess, uh, Gary Beers. Um, his middle name is Gary too, so we call him Gary Gary. Um, <laughs> um, he's become a dear friend of mine. We, we wrote uh, probably 17 tracks. We put about five out so far. We've got um, more coming out next year. We're, we're getting together actually at the end of this week to kind of work on the next single um we have one of our guitarists um his name is yohai um and he is an incredible guitarist who just went and had a tumor cut out of his head so we've been wishing him the best and um we're we're eagerly awaiting for his return and he's actually doing great so um you know out of respect we're just kind of just making sure we have everything lined up so when he comes back we're going to throw him straight on the stage you know (laughs) <laughs> oh, yeah. um, and with our drummer Zach St John who's just an insane drummer as well um, so we have that band which is called Ash and Moon um, so I'm really excited about that and and Gary being from In Excess they're, um, they're In Excess have just been really promoting their uh, their online uh, their uh, online uh, push right now so he's um, really enjoying the fruits of being back into the game as well and I've, I've kind of I'm helping him kind of just step into the fact that he is one of the best bass players the world has ever seen. So we're kind of working on that together. And um, and then my boys in Radio XX out in Vegas, we, we've written music as well, so we'll probably put something out next year as well. Um, so that's what's that, three bands? Yeah. Um, yep. And then did I have a list somewhere? I don't know if I had a list. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I've, I've written I've written um, a an animation Um which mm. is uh, which I'm pitching with my co-creator. Her name is uh, Philippa Pomerantz, and um, it's about a giraffe with no neck, and his name is Eco. And him and his his uh, disadvantaged friends go and save the world from the different catastrophes. So we've um, we've worked very hard on that, and so we have that. And then um, and then I wrote the music for her other anim- animation called Pom Pom Crew, which is about girls who go on and take take over the world, um, young girls and um, so I'm keeping busy. Yes. You really, you really are, man. And uh, yeah. let me tell you, I, I seen, I saw the clip for Vapor. Yeah. And it, I really like the way you shot that too, man. I, I don't know if the whole, it's all black and white like that, but I think that was pretty badass the way you did yeah, it. Yeah, we did that. We shot that in, in my garage. Um, uh my girlfriend you, she, i don't know if you've seen her in the clip but she appears but um i don't know she's there so it's um it's kind of like uh and then you know obviously it's very black and white and it's very dark and then it goes i go through the motions but i'm just singing to camera basically and and like i said the premise behind this single is that you can sometimes feel like vapor in the world because you feel like you've never been seen you know and that's like um, you know, I'm sure you probably felt um, when you met your wife, you, you were like, oh, okay, she gets me. You know what I mean? Or, and I, you know, that, that's the way that my girlfriend and I are both singers. So we kind of understand each other, you know, mm-hmm. whereas in, in the past probably didn't have that understanding, you know, what it's like to be able to, to, to do what we do. And 
Um, and then we just recently um, have this beautiful dog and I don't know what I'd do without this guy now, you know what I mean? And so it's like, it's just like, and he literally is, he, I'm surprised he's not been here now, mm. but he's up my butt 24-7 and I'm like, and it's just, it all comes back to this song of like, you know, you know, um, finally feeling that connection with with whoever and whatever that comes into your life. So the song, is it being released like, you know, is it a pretty big push, Toby, that you're releasing it? Because I feel like sometimes, and it's unfortunate, I feel like sometimes your music may not be as available because, you know what I mean? I feel like people aren't as aware of you as I, at least as much as I think mm -hmm. they should be because they're missing out. So is it, yeah. is it a big push that you're having for this single? I'm doing this all myself. I, I have the production team that I work with that basically um, allowed me to kind of take this on. Um, mm. I've been, I, I, uh, I'm just pushing it myself. You know, I don't, I don't have any grandiose kind of um, ideals about it. I'm, I've obviously hired the right channels for people to kind of like spread it um, through Spotify playlists. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm starting like a little hashtag thing and I have a social media team that are going to come on and help me push that as well. Um, but I'm finding this myself because with all the different projects I have, like, um, you know, I, I'm just trying to be myself and be able to like push everything out that I'm working on because I'm not getting any younger. Um, you know, we put a lot of effort into Ash and Moon. So a lot of effort's going to go into that, but um, I just have to get it out, man. It's like, I was saying this to, to everyone who asked me about it. Um, it's like having, um, yeah, it's like having, having your favorite um, T-shirt and never being able to wear it outside, you know, and, and show people what it's like. And, um, you know, hopefully the right people hear it. If, it. if it catches on, if it gets on a playlist, maybe, who knows if it trends. But, um, you know, I've got 16 more behind it and I'm just going to keep on pushing it out. So, you know. Well, man, I'm really, like I said, I'm looking forward to it. I'm always, even at my, even at 50 years old now, man, I'm, I always still get excited when musicians and bands I like come out with something, yeah. something new. Um, I, again, I, it's just, it's an awesome thing, man, that I'll share the hell out of for you. So that'll be. Okay, good. good. That, that'll be pretty cool. Is there anything you want to say to people as far as checking you out? I feel like we touched on a lot of everything, man. It's been. Yeah, mate, listen, the checking me out is great. You know, like um, it's, it's not necessarily about that right now. Like if they find me, they find me. That's great. You know, I've even started TikTok to my daughter's like, she's like, really? She even did a post on her TikTok and said, <laughs> Hey guys, can you please follow my dad? He wants to be famous. And um, because she actually, um, she's uh, she's twelve, and she actually had like some videos who went got hundred thousand people like watching one of her videos. I'm like, this is insane. What world are we in? You know, we used to just put out a record and then go to the local record store and play it, and mm -hmm. then sell it on on, and we, people would buy it. Now we have to like do things online, but that's okay. No, um. Yeah, no, I, I just, I think one of the things I wanted to leave with this is um, something that I haven't touched on too much is um, just mental health in general. Like, mm. um, you know, like over the last kind of couple of years, I've, I've really recognised that um, in my small base of community that know my music um, and reached out during the pandemic, you know, you said you saw some of the live stream events mm -hmm. that I did. Um, you know, we literally did that for our own mental health. We had to play music. We had to um, have an excuse to see, you know, um, our close friends, you know. And um, so, um, you know, men don't talk about mental health too much. I think they're becoming a little bit more verbose about it now, which is amazing. Um, you know, I just wanted to encourage guys out there to like, you know, if you do feel um, down or even, and sorry, and women as well, like we do feel down, it's, it's okay to like ask people for help and talk to each other and, and reach out and, um, and, and just, and trust that, you know, people will, will be there and not judge you for, for feeling, you know, not yourself sometimes. And God knows I've done that, you know, I'm, I'm lucky enough that I get to be able to like share it into lyrics and, and be able to pour it out that way. Or, um, I'm lucky that I have a dog and a partner and, you know, things like that, but some people don't, but you have friends and, and if you can, you know, um, feel the courage to kind of reach out because hopefully people will, will, they will be there to help you pick up your pieces. So I just wanted to leave you with that. 
Toby, I can't thank you enough for that. Um, and I'm just going to be totally upfront with you. I don't know how much, I know we talked a little bit prior to this, but one of the big things that we're doing and I'm part of is the NGBN network. And it okay. is, it's called the national grassroots broadcasting network. And it's a bunch of guys and a couple women like me. And our mission is to help with men's mental health. So the fact that you brought that up um, really kind of got to me because that's the one thing we've really been doing. And I, you know, it's been our mission, really a big mission for the last few months. Um, we, <clears throat> we, we have a gentleman, Ian Hill, who's kind of running the whole thing. He, uh, he had some, his own mental health issues. Uh, he's, he's really crushing it now looking yeah. to become the oldest man at 57 years old to play NCAA division one American football. Oh my God. Um, so, you know, you got a guy like that a guy like me, who's, you know, it was through it with weight and heart mm -hmm. issues. And, you know, I think it's amazing though, that somebody like you says it because somebody like me can say it and people may relate because they see somebody similar to them. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, when they see somebody like you, who's on the stage, who's doing a, who's out there frigging killing it, man, who's is doing mm -hmm. all these amazing things, hearing it come from you, man, it makes a big difference. And I just keep pushing that out there, man. Cause I think, yeah. I think guys like you, your celebrity, no matter how big or small it is, I think it tends to have even a bigger impact than you all realize. And yeah. it's, you know, it's amazing. So thank you for that, man. I really, uh, really appreciate that. I appreciate it. Like it just like I said, the the older you get, the more you're aware of like um of of how you how you function and how people around you function. And you know, even my 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 buddies in in Vegas, you know, they've been through. You know, COVID really hit a lot of people hard. You know, like losing jobs and things like that. You know, and um, you know, so just being more aware and being and being and just listening to each other. You know, like we have, it's it's amazing because. When I grew up in Australia, you know, the boys wouldn't talk to each other like this. It'd be like, oh, shut up, you know. <laughs> but but you'd go home and you'd still be grumpy and, and shitty because you, you didn't, you weren't able to, and then your parents were, you know, sometimes too busy to listen to you as well. So, um, you know, having, I call it lad talk, you know, the lads and I, you know, we have chats, you know, my buddy out here, Sebastian, um, me and Gary, you know, Gary's, um, you know, for his career as well. Like, you know, we we have great chats about how you feel, man. You know, what do you want to do? Like, hey, let's 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 work it out. You know, and um, so you know, it doesn't matter how big or small or where you are in the world. We all have our own individual problems that need to be discussed and, and helped through. So, yeah, man. Well, congrats to you guys on this great foundation. Yeah, yeah. man. Thanks, Toby. I appreciate that. Well, listen, man. I, I'm so excited to check out uh, the new single when it when it drops on. Uh, Thanks, man couple days man i'm i'm definitely be sharing it um oh and i'll make you laugh though tell your daughter um you're you're like 45 but i'm 50 i have a tiktok oh uh, yeah okay good <laughs> and uh i'll even make you laugh more i don't know how but i have like ten thousand followers on tiktok well there you go I don't hope. ask don't ask me how you might have a lot more than that but for me ten thousand followers that's that's kind of ridiculous i started three days ago i've got 60 I'm there like, I'm, I don't know what to do. <laughs> there, there you go, man. Well, I'm going to, uh, I'm definitely going to hit you up on TikTok. So yeah, I, let's do I'll it, even put some of this up on TikTok, man. Let's so, go. Let's go. Right. Yeah, you can, if we can share it, that'd be great. I, I want to be a, a, a TikTok dad, you know? Uh, yeah, it's so, it's <laughs> she's so embarrassed, but she's kind of, she's kind of, every, when, whenever I see her, she, she always made me do those dances and things. And I'm like, all right, I'll do it for you. And and I actually realized, you know, the kids love it, you know, they when they when the parents get involved. So I gotta remember, you know, you yeah, know, get, put my they, ego aside and just enjoy it, you know. So Yeah, they get a kick out of it, man. My daughter yeah. it, my daughter dances competitively and the other day she was all happy because uh some the LSU Tigers female dance team saw her doing one of their dances and they start sharing it on their social media. There you go. Yeah, so I'm it just, like, it's inspirational, and then she wants to amazing. dance more. You know what I mean? That's yeah, great. That's amazing. Well, listen, uh, man. I want to thank Toby again for jumping on here. We're going to be looking out for a lot of this new music coming out. Um, and you know, thanks everybody for for listening in, man. And you know, Toby has a great message there. Not only great music, great message. Great man, great dude. I'm so happy I had a chance to finally meet you, Toby. Thank you.
Mate, great to meet you too, Charles, and uh, all the best with the Bear Essentials and, and the Mental Health Foundation, buddy. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks, man. This has been the Bear Essentials. Thanks for listening. And remember, never hibernate on your goals. <laughs>